Hi everyone and welcome to another video of mine on Lightroom 5. This video is about how I go about importing images into Lightroom and how I go about picking images very quick. Now this is just my way that I do it um, and I just want to see what you think and I'll tell you, it may go on for 10 minutes the video, I'll tell you why I do this way, why I do it this way and see what you think. I think you'll agree, unless you're a really brilliant in Lightroom, that it's a very efficient way of doing it. Now, I know that I've done a video similar before and you can create a catalogue and create your own separate catalogue, which to do that you just hit um, new catalogue and you can choose where you want to put it. But I'm not really too fussed about that for now. I'm just on about everyday going images. So if you've been out to the park with your kids and stuff, you might be just using the default catalogue in Lightroom. And if you don't export to DNG, then you'll lose the work that you've done on them RAW files or whatever. So this way, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then at the end, you can export the whole thing out as its own catalogue in a saved location. Sorry about any noises you may hear downstairs. They've got two kids and you may hear a few background noises, but hopefully we should be okay. So let's go to import photos and video. And we're going to go to web images. And we have 139 images here. Now, I always, this is where you can put your metadata on. Um, so I have put my metadata on here. You can see that I'm going to in include it when I import. And I'm going to add them. I could copy them or move them or copy as DNG. Not in this scenario because the JPEGs that I'm using, just so Lightroom moves quite a bit quicker. So let's just quickly um, import these in. And as you see, this could be a wedding, this could, well this, these are a few wedding images, but there could be, it's only because they were local on my hard drive, um, there could be any images, doesn't really matter. And you'll see now on the left hand side, I've got a web images, and I've got, that's the folder on the desktop. Now I'm going to show you, if we, now basically we're going to go through, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is, I used to press the P key, right? which enabled me to flag the pictures that I liked. And then at the end, I could turn the filters on and go to flagged. And then it would show me my picked images and then I could go to, to the develop module and only edit the picked images. But I've started doing it slightly different now because you can't, you can't view the unflagged. There's no filter for viewing unflagged. So you can view flagged and view all, but you can't view unflagged images. Um, which is not a problem because at the end what you can do is you can you can come back from the develop module I'll just go to the develop module and we can go to the library module we can create a new folder view the flagged and drag them in there and it'll actually separate them anyway but I don't I don't think I like that anymore so what I'm going to do to pick the images is I'm going to press number 1 on my keyboard which will star the image and then we filters then you can view you can view rated and unrated. So if you've, let's say, how many images we got here? I don't know how many we've got. We've got, if we're just looking at the timeline, we've got 139. So let's try pick around 70 images and I'll show you what I mean. So if we press the end key, we can go into what you call grid uh, loop view, survey view. Now all I'm gonna do is have my finger on the right arrow and I'm going to pick what I like. So I'm going to press one which has set this to a 1. I'm not going to press 2, 3 and 4. That's not how I work. I'm going to press 1 again. I just go through and give them a rating. So, mm, you know, press 1 on that one. Press 1 on that one. 1 on that one. 1 on that one. 1 on that one. Mm, 1, yeah. 1. 1. Uh, yeah, 1. Yes, 1. 1. Do you know what? I'm using some of these images and they're, not, they're actually nice images I've chose. <laughs> That's why I'm picking a load. I'm sure you'll agree. We'll have that one. We'll say no to that one. No to, yeah, yes to that one. No to that one. No to that one. No to that one. Yes to that one. I'm not pressing no. All I'm doing is just going past it. I'm not pressing number one. Definitely a one. Mm, we'll one that one. So only pressing one on what I want to keep. One. Mm, one, 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 uh, that's a duplicate, right, uh, there you go, nah, we'll leave that one, 
No, no. Just to, I'm just going to quickly show you as I go past here. You, you, you'll see that sometimes when you're doing wedding photography, that as, as much as you try to keep the frame full of what you're doing, which I have done there, you still get clutter in the background. Um, just get used to it. Again, if you look, I'm always filling the frame. Me, I'm going to keep that one. I'm always filling the frame with the subjects. If you notice, you won't see me including a lot of the backgrounds in my wedding images. It's because I aren't doing really, really posh venues at the minute, so the backgrounds aren't worth implementing into the shot. When they are, we will do. There, we've got a duplicate, press one. So basically, we're just pressing one on what we like. One again. One again. I'm just going to go back here now and just talk you through a couple of This is the same window on the same wedding. I don't have duplicate that, but you'll see that using the window light, we get a nice highlight next to shadow. And you'll see that, same again, and then you'll see by just adjusting the shutter how we can really adjust the mood of the shot. I won't go into it. And then again, that's slowing the shutter down to give me a better exposure, just to have a nice high key. And then slowing the shutter, uh, speeding the shutter up to darken the background. Again, fill in the frame. I mean, I know this is not about weddings but it, again fill in the frame with what you need to do and, and and that's what you basically need to do if you don't get a very nice location is just always fill your frame I mean this happened and then a couple of seconds later she was looking at a cufflinks uh, so, uh, sorry an earring I think it is and I quickly snapped that shot uh, don't like that one uh, let's go back I didn't want that mm, that's bride coming down the stairs mm, yeah we'll press a one on that one Nah, no, not bothered. Nice attempt. You can see what I was going for, the nice shape in the curtains and that, but it's just the clutter in the room. But it's still a nice shot, but I don't, I'm not interested. And we'll go on that one. I like that one. That one's a one. That one's a one. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. For now, we'll say no. We'll give a yes. Done. done with the video like that one. No. Yes. Now, don't forget when I'm I'm going to go through it again. Yes. When I'm saying no, I'm just doing nothing. I'm not pressing the one. So, yeah, we'll have a go at that one. No. That one, no. Mm, no. No. Yeah, that's the groom. So, we'll say yeah. See, again, can you see how I filled the frame? That's, that, I mean, these, I think these have been tweaked, but they're not cropped. Um, you see how you just fill the frame with what you need, and it doesn't really matter what's in the background too much? We'll press a one on that one. Focusing on the cufflinks there, and having the bride and, another bride and the groom, the groom and his best man just slightly soft. I'm just saying, no, no. We'll press one for now. Press one for that one. Some of these are duplicated, I'm sorry. Mm, yeah, I like that's basically the groom looking out of the window, looking happy, and his mate, his best man, stood behind him. Oh, let's choose that one. Definitely choose that one. Again, using the window light from the left and filling the frame with a wall. That's the same same wall at the back. And you can see you can really create a stunning image without having a good background. Oh, let me just show you some here. Look at the guy on the right hand side. He's got a black eye there. That's out of the camera. And that's the edit. And you see how I've got rid of his black eye. And just done a, a quick two minute retouch. So which one have I chose? I've chose press the one for that one. We haven't chose that one. No, no. No, no. Yeah, we'll say yeah to that one, why not? Well, no to that one. Looks a bit false. Look, I've asked him to look at his watch, but... Yeah, it's not so bad, but we've got better. Again, remember when I said to you, fill in the frame. Fill in the frame there. And there's a look at all shit behind. And, but you don't... Oops. Pressing the end key to go back to grid. You don't really... Just press that one again. You don't really see that. The first thing you see is the lovely, nice, happy smiles from the gentleman. Um, by filling the frame. Anyway, let's speed this up. Um, yep, yeah, trying to make this look um, like 
nobody were interested, nobody were bothered about me, but it was totally and utterly set up. Again, we'll say, uh, yeah, we'll have that one. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, we'll have that one. No, for now, we'll have that one. Mm, like the colour one better for that one. Well, I don't mind that one. No. I like that one. Loving that one. Press 1. Register shot. Yeah, we'll have that one. Definitely have that one. In the um, reflection. Cake shot. No. No, I don't like it. Mm, not bad. Like that one. Like that one. Like that one. I like that one. Right, is that the end shot? Oh, let me go back. Now, it is something to watch out for if you're working with a videographer. This was my friend stood at my right hand side casting these shadows on the wall. Um, now, I didn't realise that till I got home. Um, I mean, I still love the shot and this is what I've said to you and I'll say it before. I know this is a Lightroom video um, on how to pick images, but I, just, just sometimes, like, I know that that happened and next time I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. But I'll tell you now, when the bride looked at that image, she chose that image, which I knew she would. She didn't turn around and say, oh, I didn't like that shadow on the back wall. So you need you need to remember stuff like that when you're actually doing your photography. Sometimes you'll kick yourself too hard and there's no need. Just, I mean, I wish the shadow wasn't there, but it didn't stop me selling the image it sold and i still like it even now but a kick up my jacks next time and a kick up for videographer we'll just be careful that he's not videoing or we'll watch out for that shadow next time and he'll quickly just turn his video light off while i get a couple of shots and then he turn it back on as we are working together now anyway so we'll work with each other yeah uh, this is one where we had the uh, led light i don't know if you'll see that but up here is the pod on the LED light and you can see that we used it as a rim light um, I quite like that one I like that one no we definitely don't want any of these in my tank right okay so there you go you've just seen me I've gone for 139 images in I don't know how long it's took but um, can I just um, turn my thingy on 12 minutes and I've done 139 images and I was actually talking about them. I could have done it in five minutes if I wasn't talking to you about the images. And now what, what this is the, one of the reasons why I said press the one. All we've got to do now is go to rated and if we press the G key, we'll go back to the grid view and you can see now all we're viewing is the rated images and we've chose 70 of 139. Now before by doing flagged, you couldn't view, you could view the unflagged, but there was viewed with a flagged. Now all I've got to do is go to unrated, and you'll now see we're looking at 69 unrated of 139. So you can actually view both. If you wanted to now, if you were really happy that you'd picked the correct images, you could select all them and just delete them. Um, so let's go back to the rated. And so we're now viewing the rated. And if we press the D key now, or, or press to go to the develop module, you'll see we're only viewing 70 images, they're all rated. Now, what I would usually do as a proper photographer, and I recommend you do it, I would maybe have a cup of tea, a couple of hours off, and I would also, I'd sit back, now I'm in the develop module, you can do this here, or you can go back to the library module, pressing the N key, and do the same thing again, and press your U key to unpick. Is it, is it is it you for that? Oh, no, sorry, no. It is your zero key. So if I now just take the zero off that, you'll see it's disappeared because it's gone. If we go view the unrated now, that image has gone. I'll just press the G key to go back. You'll see now, because we haven't rated it, it's moved away. So it's the zero key to take it away. So I'll press the one key and then we'll go back to the rated again. Go back to the debugging module. So basically what I usually do now, I'll fly through the develop module again after a break and then press zero. Uh, because usually when I first do a wedding, I'll get them from, I don't know, 1,500 images to 1,000 to 800. Then I'll go through again and get it down to 700, 600. Then I'll go through again and get it down to... I usually go through three times because you'll find out that that's definitely the best way to do it. But let's just say, for instance, that... Um, we like all these 
Um, they look okay, don't they? They're not so bad. Um, let's say we like them then and we want to export them now and we want to create a catalogue. Now these are backups. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to go back to my library and view my unrated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them and I'm going to delete them. Now, you'll only do this step when you're happy that you're definitely not going to use these photos. So I remove photos and remove. I'm even going to delete from disk because I don't need... In fact, no, I'll just remove them out of the library. But you would, you would remove delete from disk if you know you're finished with them. And you, basically, they were rejects. You were never going to use them because they were blurred, they were crap, the eyes were closed. There's no point archiving loads of raw files that are shit, that are rubbish that you're never going to use. So now, if we go back to the rated now, we've only got the rated 70 images left. Now, what we can do here, if we select that folder, it's up to you. I'll just show you this. You can right-click inside the folder, and you can create a folder inside that, and you could call it Picked Final. I mean, I'm not saying you have to do that, but say it Create There. So now, inside that folder, we've got a pick final. So if we select all the images and just drag them and let go on the pick final, will it move the files on disk? What that's going to do is, that's going to move the files now. I'll just go show you under the hood what's just happened. If we go to web images now, then we've got picked final. There are the images. I think they're the, they're the unpicked images that I didn't delete from the disk. They're all the ones, that, if you have a look, these will be the unpicked. They are, look. They're the, the unpicked. Usually they would not be there because you'd have deleted them, wouldn't you? So they'd be in bin. Let me just select them all and get rid of them. Move to trash. And then, so there you go. In web images, you've, we've got the pick final. And there you've got all your images in there. That's just a, a step that you can take if you want. So let's now go back into Lightroom and say, right, well, I'm using my existing catalogue that's in in my documents or something like that. So now what we want to do is we want to export this out here as a catalogue. So if you right click and export folder as a catalogue, what I usually do is you go tell it to do it in the same location. So it would be web images, picked final, and I want it to do it in there. So I want it to save my catalogue as final 2000, I don't know, I'm struggling to press my keys because my microphone's in the way. Um, and then what's going to happen is now, it's also going to include the previews and export the raw files as well. Now these aren't raw files. So now if we go here and we go export catalogue. Now I need to show you what's just happened under the hood. So if we go back in here and we go back to picked final, you'll see that in there now we've got a catalogue and we've got, it's basically copied the images, which I liked to do. So you know that that picked final now, uh, final 2014, which is what we called the catalogue, we know that everything is in that one folder. So we're not even really bothered about these. We could go like this now and... Move to trash. I mean, sorry about me struggling on this. It's because my microphone's right in my way of where I want to be. So now we're left with one folder inside the web images. Usually that would be called um, Jim's Wedding I don't, or whatever. or that, that wouldn't be called that. You'll see now. Let me just um, quit Lightroom. Jim's Wedding. Then you go in there into final 2014 and you'll see you've got your catalogue your catalogue in there saved I mean I usually save DNG so you don't really need to do this but I still do this as well and then you've got all your images in here as well there are all your images right now if we go to Lightroom now you'll see that the catalogue's going to whine because I've deleted the images look you see how we've got the explanation mark so what we'll do is we'll remove remove and now I'll show you, all we've got to do is go File, Open Catalogue, go to the desktop, go to Jim's Wedding, Picked Final 2014, go in there, and now watch what happens. We've got all those images back. 
they're all rated and we've got our catalog saved with it now usually this wouldn't be on the desktop it'd be on an external drive so you'd have everything all backed up at once and there's how to efficiently edit with Lightroom and pick your images very easy and unpick them um, you should be able to go out now and hopefully pick your images really really dead easy using now you can use the flagged like I've said but when you when you use the flagged you, you can't view flat uh, no flags and flagged so at least this way you can view you can view rate you can view unrated and you'll see there's none because obviously they, and you can view rated so that way it's I mean like I said you still can flag if that's the way you pick your images. Instead of pressing 1, you would press P for the flag and U for unflag. And then at the end of the wedding, when you'd finished our job, you could go to the develop module, uh, view your flagged, make a new folder, drag them in there, and then go back to the back to the previous folder and all your unflagged will be there and you could delete them like that. But I like using this. Thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and please let me know if you need any more videos.